Have you ever wondered how map services like Google Maps or MapQuest finds directions for you? Let's say, for example, that you wanted to get from Baltimore, Maryland to Venice Beach, California. It turns out that those answers aren't just memorized. We have to actually calculate those. It turns out that the way we calculate directions uses a bit of computer science and mathematics called graph theory. So let's discuss the basics of graph theory. So a graph is just a series of nodes connected by edges. And of those, the important words are nodes and edges. So we might have a graph that looks something like this. So imagine we have a six node graph and a node just looks kind of just like a circle generally. And some of these nodes, and we'll label them from A to F. E, F. So we might say, for example, that A is connected to D, A is connected to B, D is connected to E, B is connected to E. We might say that A is connected to E, B is connected to C, C is connected to F, E is connected to F. Um, then we might say, you know, uh, B is connected to F as well. So this is a graph. Um, so the nodes are A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then we have edges. So we have about nine edges. So we have nine edges connecting these six nodes. It turns out that graph theory has a lot of app real world application. And one of these applications is uh, in mapping technology. So why don't we just zoom in and let's take a look at a road. So here's some roads, and notice that every road connects at what you know you might know as an intersection. At an intersection, we have other roads that extend out of it, connecting to other intersections. It turns out that in maps, we can think of an intersection as a node, and we, we can think of the roads that connect the intersections as the edges that connect those nodes. The way the mapping technology works is it basically takes maps and it abstracts it to what we see as a graph, like this. So why don't we try actually looking at a map and then abstracting it to a graph? And we'll talk about how this map mapping technology will actually calculate things. Let's say we have a map that looks something like this. So we have A Avenue, B Avenue, C Avenue, and D Avenue. We have 1st Street, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, and 4th Street. Let's say, for example, that we're at 4th Street we are currently at 4th Street. So we're currently at 4th Street, and we want to get to 1st Street and D Avenue. We want to get over here to this corner. So let's explore how we might think about that and how mapping technology might help us do this. Let's also make some assumptions about the map. So we can say that a graph can either be directed or undirected. We're going to make this a directed graph. The idea with that is that think about it as all these streets are one way. So let's say that First Avenue is a one way street going to the right. We say that Second Street is a one way street going to the left. Third Street is a one way street going to the right. And Fourth Street is a one way street going to the right. We might say that A Avenue is a one way street going up. We might say that B Avenue is a one way street going down. Uh, C Avenue might be a one-way street going down, and D Avenue might be a one-way street going up. And we'll say that this cross street here goes up like that. When you have a directed graph, you don't necessarily have to assume that everything is directed. You can have a partial, you can have a graph that's with partial direction. But in this case, we're just going to assume that everything is a one-way street. Let's go ahead and also think about why we would want to take one route over the other. A graph can be so we're saying that this is a going to be directed, but we can also say that this is going to be a weighted graph. Before we do anything else, why don't we go ahead and just label each of the intersections. We'll say that this is intersection A, this is intersection B, intersection C, intersection D, intersection E, intersection F, 
um, we'll say this is intersection G, this is intersection H, I, J, we'll start at intersection K, that's where we are right now, uh, L and M. So we have uh, nodes A through M. So why don't we go ahead and take this graph. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take, we want a node for each of the intersections. But let's go ahead and this will be node A, node B, node C, node D. So we'll say A, B, C, D. All right, and let's also uh, indicate directions. We know that everything in this row is gonna go to the right. So we'll go ahead, because First Avenue only goes to the right. So we'll draw arrows pointing to the right like that, indicating direction. Uh, Second Street always goes to the left. So we'll draw some arrows like that. Um, we know that Third Street always goes to the right and Fourth Street always goes to the right. Then uh, we know that A Avenue always goes up so draw some arrows like that. Uh, B Avenue always goes down. Uh, C Avenue always goes down. D Avenue always goes up. All right, so now we have some direction. Um, now if we just look at it though, so remember we're starting at K and we wanna to get to D. Um, you know, we might just assume that, you know, you might just wanna go all the way up, all the way to the right, or you wanna go all the way to the right and all the way up but it might not quite be that simple. Let's think about why that might be. What we wanna say is that there's a cost from going from one intersection to the other. So for example, we might have, and the idea behind a cost is that it takes a certain amount of time to get from one intersection to the other. So for example, it might take, we might say it takes uh, three units to get from K to L, but it might take uh, two units to get from K to I, and then one unit to get from I to E, and then, you know, four from A to E, and, you know, there are a lot of reasons why these might differ. It could be a distance from one intersection to the other, it could be something like speed limits, it could be, there might be some, you know, road work right here, for example, in which case the weight would actually be pretty high, you know, this might be like 10. Um, there could just be normal traffic, you know, along, uh, you know, from A to B. So maybe like, you know, people are rerouting from this construction over here. So this will have a weight of eight, but maybe this has a weight of three, two. This has a low weight two. This is three, four, five, four, uh, five, six, five. I'm sort of ma making some of these up, but you know, and like this is actually calculated pretty well now. Basically, like all this inf information is always being sent from mobile devices, from cars. So mapping software is always getting this new data. So anytime um, there's a new traffic jam, that data is getting sent from mobile devices all the way to their servers so that th that traffic data can be utilized in calculating the quickest way to get from one place to the other. Um, and this ends up being like pretty, this ends up being pretty useful. So let's go ahead and label the weights on this graph. So it's so the cost from getting to K to I is two, I to E is one, four, eight, 10, three, three, two, two, three, three, four, two, four, five, six. Uh, oh, I forgot one. So from G to H, we'll make that two. Uh, this will be two. Uh, D to, H to D will be five, and C to D will be five. All right, and let's go ahead and just do some quick calculations. So if we actually wanted to calculate the quickest way to get from K to D, we'd have to utilize an algorithm, something like uh, Dijkstra's algorithm. But let's go ahead and just think about a couple things. Let's say we were gonna take, we wanted to find the total cost of getting from um, A to B to C. Well, that's going to be the cost from getting to A to B, which is 8, plus the cost of getting from B to C, which is 4. So the total cost of getting from A to B to C 
would be 12. 